Solar Puria Sattva. Trust, it's what we build. Presents the Realty Debate with Manisha Natarajan. Just about every report since November 8th this year has declared that demonetization will bring down property prices in India. And the figures range from 10% to as much as 30%. Add to that the latest report by Prop Equity, a real estate research firm, which has declared post-demonetization Indian real devaluation of 8 lakh crore rupees will be wiped off. And you can perhaps see why a buyer who was ready to buy after a long wait has now also decided to step back and stay clear of any decision right now. In general, I get very skeptical when all views turn to predict just one thing, and that's a doomsday scenario. And find that a saying by Warren Buffett, the smartest investor of our times, is worth keeping in mind if not following. When everyone gets greedy, you should be fearful. And when everyone is fearful, it's time for you to be a little bit greedy or at least get out on a hunt. Welcome everyone to Truth vs. Hype, Realty Debate on Property Prices Falling Because of Demonetization. Samir Jasuja, CEO of Prop Equity and the author of that 8 lakh crore rupees being wiped out of real estate is of course joining us today, as is Gitambar Anand, CMD ATS Infrastructure Limited and President Kridai, Baman Irani, CMD Rustamji and Vice President MCHI Kridai, also with us, Pankaj Kapoor, Founder and Managing Director, Lizes for us, because it's always great to pitch two data guys and find out what the truth is in this truth versus hype debate on real estate. And Ramesh Nair, Chief Operating Officer, Business and International Director, JLL India, who was very agitated and very upset when he came on NDTV Profit during market hours and says, this is all bunkum. All right. Let's start with the report highlights first and tell our viewers what Samir Jasuja, the author of the report, has written in that report. 8 lakh crore to be wiped out, he says, exact amount, 8 lakh 2,874 crore expected to be wiped off in the next 6 to 12 months. Residential real estate valuations in top 42 cities, I wasn't even aware if there are so many cities, but I'm sure all state capitals have also been taken, we'll ask Samir. Sold and unsold will take a tumble and fall up to 30%. Maximum fall on total market valuation will be in Mumbai, 2 lakh crore rupees, followed by Bangalore, surprisingly, at 1 lakh crore, and Gurgaon at 79,000 crore, but that could be the size of the markets. Gurgaon is one of the micro markets, of course. Indian Realty is now bracing for subprime level crisis, and this is actually a very worrying statement, which is expected to deeply impact the core unorganized real estate and black money. So all the organized real estate developers on the panel today have been let off right up front. We expect a lot of secondary market transactions coming down in volume. For every five buyers out there, there was only one buyer willing to pay in all checks. Samir Jasuja, first defend that 8 lakh crore market cap figure that you've come out with. How did you come out with those numbers? You <laughs> see, the thing is, first of all, uh, these numbers are with respect to 42 cities. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take an average of 10 to 15 percent of 50 lakh crores, which is the market value mm -hmm. that we captured uh, over these 50 cities of 40 lakh properties, mm -hmm. odd, uh, this is the number that emerges if you take 10 to 15 percent as a, as a normal case scenario, which uh, first of all is a short term number that we are stating. We are saying that this is going to be a short-term phenomena hmm. because people are going to back off in making property transactions, expecting property prices to fall. So you are saying 6 to 12 months, right? We are saying 6 mm -hmm. to 12 months. Okay. Of course, this is one of the best steps taken for the economy and for the real estate sector. I have been saying that and I have said that on that report. And I have also said, which has not been taken by the media, mm -hmm. is that the stronger developers will benefit tremendously. Mm -hmm. People who are larger developers, organized developers, who deal professionally and create transparency will benefit. The people who have taken a lot of debt, and today that debt was getting helped uh, by them uh, from NBFCs. So, uh, they were getting money from NBFCs. Now NBFCs will also stop lending and their projects will go into a little bit of a toss. And who that will may take lead debt? To you mean developers? I mean developers that are taking debt over okay. the last two years are getting okay. funded not by sales entirely but NBS 30,000 crores by NBFCs has come into the system in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Now with the current scenario uh, and they are very dependent on this debt, I am not talking about all developers, we have tracked 22,000 developers. We are mm -hmm. not talking about the developers who are financially strong or who have large commercial asset portfolios that are leased out. We are talking about small developers, mid-sized developers that have heavy debt 
burdens, they will really get cash trapped and that will also lead to a situation on fallen prices. Mm. Keeping a uh, couple of other factors in mind, mostly the fallen prices is going to happen at the luxury level on the secondary market. The land transactions, especially agricultural land, farmland, the under construction properties of developers uh, which are sold mostly by check in any case will not get that badly affected at all. Commercial real estate which is sold to investors will get affected in a bad way. All right. So and he by the way, we did not even discuss <laughs> we did not even discuss the foreign commercial real estate values in this number. Oh wow. So that adds up to even more. All right, gentlemen, I'm leaving. I am <clears throat> lest I'm told that media takes sides. I am not going to take any sides today. I just want to really figure out what is this number which is believable. So Samir has qualified, but the number which was carried by media, uh, we didn't carry it. But the number which was carried by media was, of course, the market cap which was eroded. So Gidambar Anand, eight lakh crore. Do you think even if it falls by 10 to 15 percent over 42 cities, the number is worrying, scary, not believable, believable? So <clears throat> these are reports which are based on certain assumptions. <clears throat> Straight away 15 percent of, what did you say, uh, 5 lakh crores, 15 percent? 50, 50, 50 lakh crores. Lakh crore. Why do you assume that 15 percent is black money? <clears throat> it's a big assumption. I don't <clears throat> take it. <clears throat> number two. You cannot make such a grand statement without having facts in black and white that okay. the market will fall, 8 lakh crores will be knocked off. I totally, totally uh, disagree with Samir. Hmm. It is not true what he says, what his claim is. The assumption is wrong. Hmm. Uh, the primary market will not fall. Okay. And he will agree with that. <laughs> Okay, let's start here. Will you agree that the primary market will not fall, Samir? This has been one thing that the developers have said, maybe secondary. Let me finish why. Let me explain started. to you oh, why. Go ahead. You see, the primary market is always catering to the end user. Hmm. And the end user, more often than not, takes a home loan. Hmm. What was killing the primary market was the secondary market. Now, when we would launch a project, we would sell a certain proportion of stock to the investor. Hmm. The investor wouldn't stay for two years or three years. The minute after a year or maybe after an 18-month period when the investor saw that there was some money to be made, suppose he was selling at price X, he would sell his stock at X minus whatever hmm. to the end user again. And that was where all that cash was happening. Now what is going to happen is when that investor cannot exit over there because he gets only a full check payment, hmm. that customer too will come back to us, to okay. the primary real estate developer. And coupled with a low home loan interest regime, which we all agree is going to happen sooner than later, hmm. the culture in this market is going to be leverage, hmm. give, put up that deposit of 10 to 15 percent, and go and buy that property with a good developer who you trust. Basically, there was a trust deficit. Everybody was cry, crying horse for the last two years, property prices are going to crash and this and that. Hmm. There was a correction in the last two years, 15 to 20 percent in some areas, and that is the bottom because there's nobody going to do an out-of-pocket. Hmm. Because of demonetization, the market falling by 30% and 8 lakh crores being eroded and being wiped out is totally unfounded. It hmm. is based on an assumption. Hmm. So I, for industry, I do not uh, totally, I totally uh, okay. don't accept that claim. Okay. So it's based on certain assumptions because there is no real estate liquid market. I mean, like a stock exchange, which will tell you how much market cap has got wiped out. Baman Irani, come in here. We will, Samir will take all these questions and also answer, but let me get all panelists' points of view. What do you think of this report? And where do you find believable observations and not so believable observations? So, Manisha, it's, it's how you read the report, right? I mean, 8 lakh crores could also mean that you have a lot of, uh, you know, the unorganized players going out of the market, those people who are operating in various markets with, you know, the cash component, etc., etc. I think when Gitambar or I speak, we speak for the Kradai affiliated developers, the organized part of uh, the business itself. The organized part of the business, I think, for the last 7, 8 years has got such great institutional backing in terms of uh, funding requirements. Business has changed the way it functions. We've got funding now coming in at various stages. Whether it is land stage and there's equity funding, then there's NBFC funding, and then finally for construction there is, you know, the construction related funding that comes from the, uh, uh, the scheduled banks. 
uh, when you look at this entire cycle, I am very, very optimistic that A, the market will adjust to itself to say that either these smaller players will fall off by the wayside, those that were engaging in all kinds of uh, activities will not be in the business anymore, or B, the development cycle itself will slow down. If this report only screams what the headlines are, and we, you know, we've got a bad habit of reading only the headlines, if this report continues to scream only the headlines, then what will happen is the developers' new launches will slow down. All developers who have been uh, you know, in the business now have already launched their projects, have got uh, capitalization or well-capitalized to be able to complete the projects itself. I don't see any kind of a, a problem as far as that is concerned. Having to drop prices under the uh, value that is, you know, in a way, uh, expended to create the product is really a long-term shot unless someone is really in dire need and, you know, maybe one of projects get the sacrificial lamb and to that extent, whatever is the damage done. But in the long term, by screaming this report's uh, headlines, I think we'll be doing disservice to the people because there'll be a slowdown in the new launches that take place. The inefficiency we already know of the real estate sector while it is being changed in a huge way by the organized players still continues to be a, a major issue. And prices might, as a matter of fact, due to this, actually rise because the actual natural demand, no one has said has gone away. It still persists. It still is there. It's an it's a, it's a industry documented figure that there are 8 crore homes that are shortfall and in that about 2 crore homes are in the, in the cities, in the metros or in the cities of uh, India. So we should be a little, uh, uh, what do you call, go down deeper, read this report and ask somebody, uh, somebody to classify like he's already said, organized developers will actually stand to gain. I think a little more light on that will help uh, the viewers a lot better. Okay, fair enough. Pankaj, your observation on uh, what would you agree? I mean, I think the biggest question I need to ask you is that most developers are countering this argument of any meltdown in primary market prices saying that, look, if the, there is a price correction, it will only be in secondary market, which had a lot of cash component. There will be no domino effect on primary market. Convince me either for it or against it. You know, uh, you can't say that there would not be any correction. There would be a corrections, but it will be segmented and different geographic driven. Hoga. You can't really say that the correction will be across board and across all the segment. I'll see in the luxury segment it will be. The correction will be in the land and it will be in the plotted. I do not see much of the correction coming in affordable and mid segment. Apart from that, like, you know, I want to uh, draw a point of view on the report, like, you know, 8 lakh crore rupees is coming out of what? I am seeing that they have considered uh, uh, 2 lakhs units for Mumbai. So it is like, you know, unit launch in last five years which will undergo correction or there is a, all the households which are available. So if you consider the number of households only in greater Mumbai that itself stand close to 26 lakhs unit. So it is not that that the the, the properties which has been launched in last six years and seven years, they are the ones which are prone for corrections. And if, it, if that is, uh, then I see the premises of correct, uh, you know, assessment is also wrong. There's one more side of it. If you see, we have, uh, we sell close to three lakhs units across India in the primary market. We have close to 5,50,000 units getting sold in the secondary and independent houses. So altogether, we are selling close to 8,50,000 units uh, all India. And if I take a uh, uh, value of the industry, the size of the industry, which is close to 6,20,000 crores, and which is actually 6% of our GDP, and it gets correlated because real estate contribute to 5 to 6% of the GDP. So if you look at if my GDP size is 120 and 6 lakh 20 thousand rupees is the size of the industry, so that means that 8 lakh crore means that I am doing a correction more than the size of the industry. And other side is if I am doing a correction on certain limited number of property, that's also an assessment, uh, uh, wrong assessment. So I do not agree to the point of view is that 8 lakh crore rupees has been uh, assessed correctly. Either it should be assessed from the point of view of what is going to be erosions in the value of the industry. Apart from that, when we did the assessment, I see that in the land cost, I certainly see because that's what employs Why the maximum land amount and of money. Development? Uh, Why in land plotted and plotted development, development Pankaj? Yeah. Yeah, you know, land and plotted development because that's where the maximum amount of cash gets employed. Okay. Luxury housing, that's where the maximum amount of uh, cash getting employed. And this, these two things contribute. So, you know, luxury housing, which is 4 crore plus properties in metros and 2 crores in the tier 2 cities 
and, and, and entire 360 is 1 crore plus property, they contribute only 23% So the size of this particular industry. So if the correction takes place there, and if I assess the corrections taking place to 10 to 15 percent or even 30 percent, the overall impact in the corrections by virtue of the size of the market does not increase more than 22 percent. But there's another side of it. If the correction takes place, that means it will bring the affordable, uh, you know, a lot of people into the affordable range and there would be a demand growth which will happen along with the the, the, the okay, interest future. rate... Pankaj, which let's is stop here. We're only discussing 6 to 12 months right now. I think the numbers, but you've given your assessment. Ramesh Nair, your point of view on this report and the figures. Samir is a highly uh, respected uh, industry colleague and a good friend, but uh, I'd like to say here that uh, this uh, report is uh, totally uh, baseless. Uh, this is creating a lot of uh, panic and uh, confusion uh, in the market. See, uh, whatever little bit uh, I've been reading in the newspapers, uh, we are talking about uh, the government totally saving around uh, 4 lakh crores. That's 16 lakh crores of black money, uh, 12 lakh crores will uh, uh, come in, 4 lakh crores won't come, in, come out, uh, which means uh, the government will earn 4 lakh crores, it will come into everybody's Jandan account. So as per Samir's uh, report, if 8 lakh crores of value is being uh, wiped out, uh, is that what our Honorable Prime Minister has done, uh, making sure 8 lakh crores is uh, getting wiped out of the industry? This will be the biggest faux pas done by any political party ever in the world of wiping out 4, 8 lakh crores. As per this report, uh, values will fall 30% uh, uh, in many markets like Bombay, Delhi. Does that mean uh, the house in which uh, Samir currently uh, stays has just lost 30% uh, value? I'm making an open offer uh, to Samir on this show to uh, sell his house uh, to me at 30% uh, uh, discount. I'll buy it uh, today. I'll uh, send a check across. I noticed one more line which says that uh, four, to, four out of five uh, home buyers uh, yes, in India pay uh, cash. Yeah. Four out of five uh, home buyers pay cash. Which Let's assume India has uh, 20 crore households out of 100 crore population, five people per uh, household. Does that mean 16 out of the 20 crore uh, households in the country have done illegal black money transactions? They should be put behind bars, all the 16 crore uh, people uh, representatives. So it makes a lot of sweeping uh, statements. Uh, we all uh, agree that this is going to increase a lot of cash in the system. So we have to agree that uh, interest rates will come down. If interest rates come down, the biggest beneficiary will be the real estate sector with cheaper loans. A uh, lot more money coming into the organized uh, financing sector. Again, real estate will be a, a beneficiary. Uh, Samir, please note oh, that with RERA Samir, coming Samir in, supply has is going... said that organized sector will benefit. His report very clearly says that. His report also talks about the fact that the primary market with large developers will actually benefit. So, like Baman said, nobody went down below the report. So, my only question to Samir here is... and. I'm going to try and be a little bit more, um, you know, neutral. I am supposed to be neutral, so I will be doing that job. Samir, is that why bring up this 8 lakh number right at the beginning and up to 30%? Because media always has a habit of carrying the negative and sensational. And the way the report was written, it was the sensational was first and everything else was followed later. So that's my question. And then, of course, you can respond to point by point to what the other panelists have said. Uh, Manisha, first of all, why the number came up on top uh, is because we're a data and analytics company. Mm -hmm. uh, we thrive on providing data points. And I think that was the most important data point that we wanted to reflect uh, to everybody, right? So is that assumption flawed then? Because it came up on that assumption that 10 to 15 percent of and the total like. So It's an allegation I like uh, Ramesh Vari right Manisha, I don't know why we are making such a big deal out of this report. In the oh, stock oh, market, oh, yeah. <laughs> Allow me to complete. <laughs> when you look at the stock markets, many, many times over a period of one year, at least 10 to 20 times in a year, over 8 to 10 lakhs of value of shareholders gets eroded on a daily basis. And it 20 gets events restored. happen. And it gets restored. And it gets restored. Right. We are talking about, first of all, a short-term period here. Okay. Got it. Second of Absolutely. all, we are talking about value of properties that have got launched and got completed from 2008, going up all the way to properties that are going to be completed till 2020. We have a very large market size of real estate and we know that. 
in anybody's right mind. They are stacking up. 2008 to 2020. Yes, and there are 50 lakh properties we are talking about here. Okay. Right, and we can give you a count of every property and every project in that. Right. No, but the assumptions, Samir. Secondly, let's. Let's Let him finish. let's Let him finish. ask let's give him any a, yeah. logical Indian citizen today, all my esteemed panelists, any when such a big event has happened in this country, I would say as big as something post independence. Who, Economic which, reform, I would which say. rightful I... investor or end user today will not want to wait and watch for 6 to 12 months to see what impact it will have on the market before he makes that decision to go and buy the property. So, ah. will that, right? so does that there mean is, this that is going to lead to, and that is why exactly, the ah. question, my, no. point, my point of view is, first of all, people no. are not going to transact as much as they were transacting for the next 6 to 12 months. Mm -hmm. They are going to be in a wait and watch period. Sure. You know, this report has just not come out of thin air. I have personally spoken to about 100 people from brokers to real estate private equity funds to developers to some of the top IPCs. I know of exact number of transactions which were going to be happening and people have pulled off last minute. People are asking for 20 to 30 percent discounts. Right? That's that's okay. the thing. No one. But may I? May let's, I? May let's, I? Let's let's get real. Let's get real. Let's get real. May, 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 I, may I? May I? Just this say is something. also this is also my estimation, mm -hmm. right? This estimation is coming out from a data analytics company based on the fact that these are X number of properties with such a big event happening. And are we saying a sector where maximum black buddy goes? Also, by all means, I would like to say this on national media. Most real estate investors, and I would say most here, buy real estate to park cash. Most of the time that happens from an investment community. I am not talking about from an, an end use community, okay. right? And let's not deny that, right? We have maximum amount of black money going, whether it's the politicians, whether it's the bureaucrats, whether it's the industrialists who are buying property, a large component. Today we are talking about agriculture land. 90% of the transaction is in cash, Manisha, 90%. A Chhatarpur farmhouse, which is for 40 crores an acre, is down to 12 crores an acre. Last transaction done in three days. What uh, my friend Ramesh said that I will send you a check of 30% for your apartment. Fortunately, I did an all-check transaction. I live in a community which is an all-check community, and that's an apartment complex that is ready. Uh, I didn't say all properties will come down. I just said few types of properties will come down mostly. I am still maintaining all under construction properties that are being sold by reputed developers will not get affected. I don't know why we have... Okay, so let's stop we, there. Let's stop there. We have now, great this is, developers this is on this question. panel and I am on their side. No, I no, also so said people like so Godred and Tata and ETS and BLF will benefit. Are we saying, are we showing, saying that there, is, there are in a in a, in, in a particular location, which is Golf Course Extension, where investors are sitting with black money in Magnolias or Aralias, and there will be some, some where second sales yeah. have already happened. You're saying primary sales, you all bought in check. Secondary sales, if, if Magnolia's value has gone up from your buying price of 6 crores to 18 crores today, it has not gone up all in white. You agree with that? No, it, it has gone, gone up, up because white. of a lot of black. Oh, please. It has right. gone up in white. I'm sorry to say there are certain, so tomorrow there is a demand. Yeah. No, no, there is there no is conflict. There is no contradiction. Absolutely. Let me clarify this. Real estate today is being driven clearly by demand and supply, right? Okay, Today, no, no, let's, let's not let's take that get, example. Let's, I think that's let's also take not that clearly. Fair. Let's exactly. look at any market. Let's look, look, at, let's any look market. at any let's market. Let's look at Today, secondary market. Today, by demand we, and supply. We all agree that from secondary sale onwards, uh, some amount of cash starts creeping in because that's the reason why the Prime Minister had to do demonetization because there was so much cash. And lots of, uh, I, I mean, you know, fund managers internationally used to look at India and say, why is there a bubble in Indian real estate? It must be because of the cash economy. Now, that Manisha, is not what we're going to... just pick up registration records. I will bet my life on just it. Don't go just one land. second, no, sir. No, 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 no apartments. I, I am apartments talking about all. secondary oh, market properties. No, no, no. Pick up 50 oh, properties in let's any micro market housing. and you Something will find answer. the answer. variation. You know, I picked up a Lodha project. I want to say this on record. Hmm. 200 registrations in an apartment complex and I can provide this to the, to the media, by the way. On the same day, there were three transactions with a variation of 40%. Why was that happening? 
So let us not take into account that cash does not exist in the system in real estate. We are not let denying us that. Not any okay. micro market you pick okay. up of okay. choice. Gentlemen, 50 properties right. pick up, you'll have a variation of 30% in those 50 properties in any because micro market. Because of the cash element. All Absolutely. Right. We now can't my basic that. question is, gentlemen, some parts of the market which are inflated because of black money, come down, no, 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 will it no, no, not no, have no, an no, effect no, on the rest no of the reasons for that. markets? Baman, come in here and then Gitambar as well. Bombay, by the way, is going to erode the most. As, yeah, per, as per the report, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one is just to answer. Sorry. So, can I just go ahead? Listen, first of all, Samir, just to bring to your attention, registration happens on a different day than when the actual uh, booking takes place. The same days. Imagine I buying an apartment at the start days. of a, subject, you know, building construction and registering it two years hence. I'm not yes, it is the same day. Registration taking place on the same. When Samir, booking Samir, happens just, in just Bombay, one Let me just clarify because you know, audience su suddenly is very happy to hear headlines only, okay. which we've seen earlier also. You know, people have lost perspective of. Just, 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 just let me finish here. You know what's happening in India right now? 8 lakh crores, 14 lakh crores. People don't know how many zeros come after those, but everybody's very happy hearing all these big numbers. I just want to say this, that there are instances, and we should not kind of paint the entire industry with one brush. There are instances where people have booked an apartment on the day of the launch of a project, or on the pre-launch of a project, and they've got a very exclusive and special rate. Secondly, these people have then gone ahead and registered the property one and a half, two years hence. And there's a natural incline in prices, 15 to 20 percent year on year, because of the you know way the financial system works. Okay. My whole point is there is not going to be, and like maybe you've said in your report, and like you know people have just been screaming with with headlines, and they should dive deeper. I agree that inland transactions across the country, there may be a, there may have been a whole host of things that were happening on the cash side, but you have to take it from me, and I speak. From, from you know uh, a responsible point of view that in the city of Mumbai even the even the transactions that uh, you know Pankaj spoke about uh, of, of being super exclusive they were taking place in check I'll give you instances where JLL themselves have taken these apartments and sold them in the market JLL like a company puts an ad in the paper calls for responses in Mumbai all land transactions have taken place through a through a, a bidding system electronic bidding system to you know verify the highest prices most of these have then gone to court and you know where, where the final uh, decree has taken place. So please let us understand that cash may exist in the hinterland or in the peripheral areas, but in the larger cities where this report is screaming off or where people assume this report is screaming off 8 lakh crores being eroded, it is not going to happen. Please appreciate, you might actually slow down with all these reports coming. The new launches will get slowed down, which means that the inherent demand will continue growing. And at one point of time, there will be the hockey stick recovery, which is what we saw in the earlier dip also. So we should be very responsible as media as to what we carry forth to our viewers. Okay, fair enough. And this is what I'm, I'm also a bit worried about. As it is with RERA, your new launches are going to come down. Also, because a lot of developers are seeing sales slow down, they're not willing to launch new projects, right, and overextend themselves. That's the second point. And now this whole demonetization fear where at least the buyer is going to be on the sideline for a while before he takes the plunge again. Gitambar, tell me, I mean, what is likely to happen? When do you think, what will it take for the buyer to come back? Do you think like an interest rate of... Eight, eight and a half percent, half a percent slash is something which will get him back into the market. What will restore the buyer confidence? The buyer was back in the market. Mm -hmm. Let me say that October was one of the best months for the buyers. It as was, right? It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Average pricing of housing, I'm talking of mass housing from the organized sector across the country is between 4,500, actually even 3,500 to let's say 5,500. If you're looking at a 30 percent correction, you mean to say that prices will come down by 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per square foot? No, they won't, because input costs do not allow that. Projects have already been, you know, there's been financial closure, banks have put in debt, construction funding, and there is a, you know, there's, there's a bottom line, I mean, which we do need as a businessman, and nobody's going to compromise and do an out-of-pocket product. Mm -hmm. What happens with Manisha when a report says that wait for 12 months because prices will correct? People will wait. And prices don't correct. Mm -hmm. In fact, if prices rise... Who will take the responsibility? Who will be responsible? This is what, Manisha, this is what happened in the last two years when everybody was shouting horse, prices will correct, prices, and we were saying, you know, prices have already bottomed out. Go ahead and make that purchase. People started buying, and whoever waited 
you know, actually got a, it could, could be a 200 rupees per square foot extra. I'm talking about even our products in the NCR. I'm talking about good developers in Kadai across the country. People did increase, even 200 rupees per square foot increase, and it's an increase. Hmm. And for an end user, that 200 rupees a square foot hurts. Hmm. So why should we make irresponsible statements saying, I guarantee prices will fall in the next 12 months. So wait, I'm saying this, that, you know, you tell them, be candid, go do your homework well, see your developer, and if you feel that prices will fall, don't buy it. But okay. don't say this with such assurance. No blanket statements. I think Not the bottom all. line is no blanket statements. One, one second. Here. Can Sameer, I just say one thing here? Sameer, tell me one, one thing. One last thing. No I would one like has answered say. that question to me. If you're saying part of the market is likely to fall down, which has a lot of fluff, which has maybe bad developers, which is unorganized or sitting with the investors. There around the ambit but, report but the also. Large Large investors, large developers will not see, primary market won't see. I am in my mind not being able to distinguish and get the answer. How will one part of the market fall, but the other part of the market won't fall? And Manisha, How is that going to happen, Samir? How do you justify? You and your report have said that large developers, primary market, all checks won't fall. But hey, here's a possibility that all of Mumbai will fall by an average of 20%. How are you distinguishing the markets? Everybody is distinguishing the market. And I want to know, how do you separate a market which is so intertwined between investors and end buyers? That is... The answer I'm looking for today, Samir. So Manisha, start with that. Yeah, I'd like to answer this and I'll answer it with a very sound judgment. Hmm. Okay, first of all, I have done this show with you for three years. Correct. You have been on this show with me for the last one year. I have been the person who's been saying this is the best time to buy. Yes. Have I been saying that or not? No, no, right? no. no. I just just one second, just oh. one second, right? Fair enough. Because we have continuously believed that the real estate prices have bottomed out because hmm. of for end users where prices had corrected 20 to 25 percent. Now what happens? There is a big event that has happened that has shaken all the markets. When you go to buy anything in the market today, sales of people have dropped from 40 to 60 percent. Because there's no cash in the market, Samir. So buy even sir, a sir, shirt, there's a certain sir, figure. Exactly my point of view. What I'm saying, That Manisha, cash also goes to the real estate no, sector. No, it doesn't. No, they leverage because and they're being a full <laughs> check payment. They're not getting 2,000 rupees per note to buy a property. Sir, you Let's are talking not, about a very small let, part see, of the market. See, was making a very pertinent point. Sir, are Let's you not, saying that real estate transactions only just happen a in check? Just a minute. And when you buy shirts, you buy by cash. When you buy One sec. That's why, that is why people are not selling in the shops because people, the first concern of everybody is let me first go and change my money. My shirt can wait. Same but with real estate, sir. No, no, no. Manisha, even Manisha, more. Let's not forget. Even more so, it's a lifetime decision. was making a very pertinent point. The Ambit report. Remember the Ambit report which said real estate prices will correct by 50% because the rental uh, return is not, uh, is totally askew from the capital value? Did it fall by 50%? But that was 2015 where the black money wasn't taken No, 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 no. But that was another report which had such a claim. So let's not go by these reports. Sir, we are anyway saying it's a very short-term phenomena because... 12 months is not short-term, Sir, with Everybody this kind of a big impact, after that no. it doesn't happen, who goes back? back? Let's not be irresponsible. Let us, okay. let us advise the buyers candidly. The Realty Debate with Manisha Natarajan. Pankaj, come in here. Pankaj, come in here. And, and Ramesh, come in here, Pankaj. Well, my, I have still not got the answer. How is it that some, even if it's next six months, how is it that some part of the same market will decline and others will keep holding? Are we saying that there is no room for developers, good, credible developers who've been dealing with an all white to cut prices? So if at all prices will fall, it will be with the stock, which is with the investor, and that will come in the market. Now, what quantity of that will come in the market, you don't know. Whether you will catch those deals which are 20%, 30% cheaper, you don't know. So are you willing to be on the lookout for those distressed deals and get that great bargain? Is that what we're talking about? Someone answer. Yeah. Yeah. Pankaj? You know, Manisha, we begin and then uh, I believe the Gitambar mentioned, he says that the price has already go undergone correction by 10 to 15 percent. And if you look at the prices for last three years being stagnant, that itself is a time correction. So one thing is that if the prices have not gone up, so they uh, 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 has not come down, so they have not also not gone up. So there's a stagnancy and there's an inflation adjusted correction which is going up. So important aspects is will it go up or not? So the amount of inventory which is lying. So if you look at we have around 50 months of inventory. An efficient market maintains 8 to 12 months of inventory. 50 months of inventory doesn't suggest that the prices will go up. Having said that, I also agree and 
uh, say that why the price is not coming down is because this industry is facing a cost crisis. The prevailing price is not interacting with the consumer, but the prevailing cost is also not letting developer to reduce the prices. I did some working also. I realized that if I consider my prevailing land cost, approval cost, including the corruption cost, which adds up to 20%, and if I take 35% as a land cost, and then your uh, development cost and construction cost, builder's margin has got shrunk to 10% in the current manner, which in three years or four years back used to be 30-35%. Important aspects which we need to talk about demonetization is it's going to solve the cost crisis for the real estate. I do not see a short-term corrections happening into mid and affordable segment because as the Gitambar says that a 3,500 rupees rate, uh, uh, ongoing rate, you can't really reduce by 30 percent, it comes down. And if the industry, 80 percent of the sales are coming from mid and affordable housing, luxury in terms of number of units only contributing 12 percent, and, and the plotted development only 4 percent. So in that light, I do not see a sharp correction. But having said that, I also see, uh, don't see there's going to be a rise in the in the near term future. Okay. Uh, having said that, get... there may be a okay. scope for a developer as the, pr as the interest rate comes down and if their margin improves, they will pass it on. And that's what I am also hearing that the, go the credit has been talking with the bankers and coming with the reduced interest rates, which frankly speaking will reduce the size. Uh, just one more point which I wanted to add Very further. Crazy. Yeah. Even if I consider 20% corrections in the real estate uh, market in today's sense, this will catapult the sales so much that the industry size will grow close to 1 lakh crore, which okay. is close to 8%. So in the true sense, if I take 8 to 10% growth in the industry, the valuation of this particular industry is going to grow rather than getting reduced by because of the demon, demonetization, that okay. kind of thing. So, so, so you know, assessing... Is all right, correctly. all right. No, I think... I I, no, I very honestly, Sameer, I, I, we get that. Your report does not say that the industry size is going to shrink. It's only going to say that be prepared to face a short-term shock. No, That's, there's I one think, more thing. Yes, we're, very quickly, then Ramesh has... We're discussing the primary uh, market here. Huh. So, uh, so when uh, what Pankaj says and what Gitamar says, we are talking a large part of this constitutes secondary markets. So when from 2008 onwards, a price of, say, a property in Gurgaon has gone up from 3,000 rupees a square feet to 15,000 rupees a square feet. So what if it comes down to 12,000 rupees a square foot? Heavens are not going to fall. Yeah. Right, and that's going to happen. No, we're not talking about Gurugao. We're talking about Bombay as well. So Bombay, for example, lower Parel has gone up from 8,000 rupees a square foot to 35,000 rupees a square foot. We are speaking for the country. We are speaking for the, country. for the country. And we are talking about 2008 completed onward, not just primary projects being launched of 3,000 rupees a square feet today. Wait, that's wait, a very wait. small, isolated part of the total 40 lakh crores we are talking about. That is what has to be understood very carefully based but on But I answer. wish that report was that specific. The point of the matter is that when I saw that report, I was in shock. I was like 8 lakh crore getting wiped out and property prices falling from 20 to 30 percent. How do you distinguish that certain part of primary markets with good developers? Every report says just one thing, Ramesh Nair. Good developers, primary market, affordable and right-priced homes will not fall. Rest, guess what? It's going to fall. Amongst the masses. Right. So, it boils down to just one thing, Ramesh, and, and, and tell us, what's the truth here? We are saying good developers, primary market, right-priced homes won't fall, but hey what, guess what, everything else will. Sami, uh, Manisha, you need to change uh, Samir's uh, headline now. He's clarified that uh, the impact is going to be minimal on primary. It's mainly going to be on secondary. That should come as a headline. Uh, Samir uh, also mentioned that the impact is more going to be on plots and uh, farmlands, uh, fully agree. Uh, Samir also mentioned that uh, this 8 lakh crore which is getting wiped out is going to come back into the system, which basically is uh, for the viewers that if there's going to be so much of valuation happening, this is a great time to go and buy. See, on the secondary homes, I have, my, I have a view. This report assumes that everyone who buys a secondary home basically uh, is paying cash. Secondly, yeah, everyone who said, has a second... Unless proven that you don't have black money, you're a black money hoarder in this country, right? Sec With this no, money. that doesn't mean everyone who buys a secondary home buys it on cash. Yeah. Second is, everyone who has a secondary home is going to exit. How many people are just going to exit just because they saw the, uh, a little bit of uh, value erosion? And third, what is the size of the secondary home market? 
is the size of the secondary home market as big as the primary home market so that the secondary home will end up competing with the primary home market. So I don't think Pankaj, it's that big. Uh, it because is, it is. If you take the secondary along with the independent housing and all those things, it's frankly saying a primary. I, I think the primary is a lot bigger than uh, the secondary market. market. It is bigger than primary by three times or three times, no, right? No, 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 no. I'll tell you what is going to happen. Hmm. The investor now will be forced to stay invested to book a long-term capital gain. Okay. So because after three years, when he sells a full check uh, holding, he will be uh, taking advantage of indexation. Long-term capital gains is 20%. So if my price is X, his price will also be X. He will pay tax on a long-term capital gain. I'll be paying a tax on a business income. My investor will be holding for three years plus and paying with indexation about 15 to 16%. And he'll still make money. He'll still make much more money than he would in an FD. So the secondary market has to mature. The investor has to mature to thinking that his horizon now is not two years. It is now three and a half to four years. He'll make good money. It's a good investment. Real estate is one of, still one of the best assets to invest in. The, if, if, the, if the location is right, if your developer is right, it is bound to see a very, very decent appreciation. Okay, gentlemen, I will have to conclude on that. We have basically taken double the time. But yes, as Ramesh said, that... If we, we all have to get responsible, I mean, this fear phobia that property and real estate prices is going to crash, blanket statements have to be taken with a lot of, not a pinch of salt, but yeah. with a bag full of salt. Having said that, short-term pain will be felt across the board, primary or secondary. You can't distinguish mm. that market and say, you know, two houses will feel the, everyone will feel the pinch. There will be, you know, at least the developers who had started seeing buyers coming back will see some amount of sale stopping and will not be able to increase prices at least for a long time now. When will the buyer come back? I believe that once you have home loan rates coming down, I think the buyer's cost of house will anyway go down, so he or she will come back. But like we said, we are all here to just make sure that we separate the truth from the hype. This is of course borrowed from that award-winning program on NDTV, which my colleague Basu does, but I couldn't think of any more apt terminology for this debate. So gentlemen, thanks very much. Fear has been overplayed. Time also to start absorbing and understanding the positives of demonetization. Like I said, cheaper home loans, lower e EMIs, which will make homes affordable. And as Gitambar said, you know, your bank FD rates will come down. So you could actually see real estate returning as an investment asset class with better or reasonable rental returns. But Samir's report also, 6 to 12 months, is going to be a time of turmoil. Go out there, buy a house, don't expect property prices to crash. If you're buying a great property and a decent property, you might get your choices becoming fewer. Don't also be in a hurry to jump into a property. Well, nobody is right now, isn't it? So you don't need to hear that from me. Goodbye and thanks so much for joining